Welcome on in to MRN and NASCAR Coast to Coast presented by Flow Racing. My name is Chris Wilner here from the Concord, North Carolina studios. Kyle Ricky out there at Stafford Motor Speedway. Looks like a beautiful afternoon here as we record this episode. Kyle, how was your weekend? It was nice to reconvene uh, in person again out at Bristol Motor Speedway. We covered the NASCAR Truck Series as well as the Arkham Menard Series and uh, had a good time doing it. Uh, how was your uh, the rest of your weekend and the start of this week? It was good. I mean, Bristol it was a blur because it happened yeah. so quick. A very short weekend. You fly in, uh, do the doubleheader on Thursday night with the Arkham Menard Series and the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. And then uh, we were done because the Performance Racing Network took over uh, for the Xfinity and Cup race. What did I do uh, this weekend? Uh, a couple short tracks uh, ran this weekend, the New London Waterford Speed Bowl. Uh, went over there, watched some modified racing, uh, went to a go-kart event on Sunday. Uh, so kept busy. Um, it, it was nice to, to be home, uh, cover an event, and still have the weekend. So uh, gearing up for a big weekend here at Stafford. Did I hear you were also planning on the casino? That's what you told me when we were in Bristol. Did you end up going? I uh, I did. Okay. I did. We, we... What's that? I was going to say, did you go to concert? No concerts. Ah. Uh no, no concerts You're always this weekend. seeing something. I was always curious. We have a couple coming up. I have a couple in uh, about two weeks. Hall & Oates, one of my favorite all-time oh, groups. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So it's going to be fun. But uh, did some gambling, lost a bunch, and then on my last machine, won it all back. So I left even. So that's a, that's a you good day. You won it all right on there. a slot? I won everything that I, had, that I had spent that day back, yes. Wow. Okay, mm. Kyle Ricky, the king of the slots. Maybe you need to go gambling go with you next time. Oh, well, <laughs> you're a lot better than me. I, I stick to the tables, at least, but that's where I lose all my money. Anyways, uh, we've got a great show for you. Uh, we were talking Bristol. Sammy Smith, the big winner out on Thursday night, uh, basically won everything. Practice, qualifying, the race. He won two championships in the process. So brought the broom to Bristol, did Sammy Smith. So we're going to talk to him about his weekend his season, I mean, it's been a breakout year for him, getting involved now in the NASCAR Xfinity Series for Joe Gibbs Racing, and obviously still sticking to his short track roots, running uh, super late models where he's been on a tear pretty much every time he's been on the track. So we'll uh, dive into all things Sammy Smith coming up in segment number two. But of course, we had a lot of winners this week, again, celebrating championships at a lot of our short tracks all across the country, uh, and, and we we did it again uh, this weekend here with uh, several finishing up their years, including Hickory Motor Speedway. But Kyle will kick off our Coast to Coast Top 7, and I will go ahead and stick with the guy we're going to have on the show with Sammy Smith, again winning his fourth ARCA National race this year, sixth total as he uh, also won the East title with some victories there as well in the Bushes Beans 200 at Bristol. Second straight ARCA East title, and again won the Sioux Chief Showdown, which is that championship within a championship uh, for those that can't compete on the big tracks, which he couldn't until he turned 18, uh, a little after uh, the midway point of the season. Probably could have won the, or could be in contention for the national championship uh, if he was able to. But uh, nevertheless, heck of a job by Sammy. His whole KBM team on the ARCA side did a great job. But that national points scenario, Kyle, Nick Sanchez, who had to deal with all sorts of problems, including a jack falling off, nearly crushing one of his crew members, uh, that points lead that was once 12th, uh, it is now 5th. And it's uh, five points over Daniel Dye. So it'll be interesting to see yep. what happens with two short tracks still to come. Yeah, Daniel Dye, a uh, man on a move right now, had a good run at Bristol. Wasn't uh, spectacular at the front of the field, but he was there and uh, finished about 10 spots ahead of his competition. And that's enough to really chip into that championship battle and make it a three-way race with just two races to go in the Arkham Menard series, both on short tracks, by the way, going to be fun. Yeah. Uh, we're used to ending the season at Kansas Speedway, but now we're ending at Toledo uh, and they have a race at Salem before that on October 1st. So it uh, should be fun to watch. Yeah. Toledo, a home track for the Arkham Menard right, series. Number two. Yeah, no, I was going to say, go ahead, Kyle, yeah. keep ripping. Yeah, win winner number two in our uh, Coast to Coast Top 7, Justin Bonsignor. We'll go with the NASCAR Wheel and Modify Tour. He won the Eddie Partridge 256. Speaking of somebody that's been ripping here lately, he is yeah. ripping up through the standings. Remember, he opened the season 31st in the championship standings, leaving New Smyrna, uh, the biggest car count of the year. He was dead last as 
low as you can get. Uh, and now suddenly finds himself in the championship battle within just a couple of points, three in fact, uh, behind point leader John McKennedy. Uh, for Justin, though, it was uh, a great win at Riverhead Raceway, led 211 of the 256 laps from the pole had, and uh, held off Patrick Emerling at the finish. So uh, two in a row now for Justin, and suddenly we have a three-way battle for the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour title. It's absolutely unbelievable, the point shift over the last couple months in the uh, NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour Series. And, and, you know, we talked to some of the drivers. I even remember talking to Ryan Priest about you'd never want to leave the door open for a Justin Bonsignor. And when John McKennedy and Ron Silk got into it a couple we couple races back, it just kind of really set the stage for a comeback tour. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there uh, with two races to go. The first at Thompson coming up on October the 9th. Coast to Coast number three winner of the week. I'm going to go with the man also at Bristol in the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. He was a short tracker. He's now a winner for the first time on the National Series Tour. That is Ty Majeski winning the Truck Series race, his first career 40th start. He finally got it done. Had to hold off uh, Zane Smith, uh, a couple teammates as well. Matt Crafton was up there near the end, Parker Kligerman. Uh, what a race for Ty. Um, you know, I feel like he's been close a couple times and just something's happened, but they've got the speed all day long. He qualified up near the front and uh, basically uh, came over the radio to Joe Shear Jr.'s crew chief there at the end and said, short track showdown, this is what I live for, and he certainly got it done, didn't let the pressure get to him. Uh, but there's no pressure when you're a two-time Slinger Nationals winner, you won a snowball, you've won the Rattler five times. I mean, he's used to being in those situations, but really cool to see the emotions of him and his team to get the win and not only that, punch your ticket to Phoenix in a shot at the championship. So what would you think, Kyle? Yeah, that was a great race. Uh, it was only a matter of time for, for Ty, who, if you remember right, had quite the introduction to NASCAR yeah. uh, three, two years, two and a half years ago now at Daytona. I believe it was in his second start, beginning his first full-time year. Upside down in the tri-oval, sliding into turn number one on his roof. Uh, he's come a long way since then, and, and uh, it was only a matter of time before he took that first checkered flag. Great strategy call. Uh, late in the race, we saw a lot of that at Bristol over the weekend in, in uh, two of the three races uh, for, for NASCAR. And uh, Ty put himself in good position and was able to take that checkered flag, and now will run for a championship. All right, well, let's go on to number four, Kyle. Who's on your list? I'm going to go with one of the young ladies from the Hickory Motor Speedway uh, getting a win this past Saturday night. Uh, the late model championship race at Hickory, Isabella Robusto. Uh, we've watched this young lady uh, come up through the ranks over the last maybe a little less than a decade, at least uh, eight or nine years uh, from Bandoleros at Summer Shootout on Tuesday nights at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Now competing very competitively all year in a late model at the Hickory Motor Speedway and held off this year's champion Landon Huffman yeah. and route to the win on Saturday night. So congratulations to Isabella uh, picking up that win, a field sprinkled with a lot of young, talented uh, ladies and even some older ladies and, and Annabeth Barnes Crum, who is a, uh, a the racing mom out there. So yeah. uh, nice to see that at Hickory and nice to see Isabella in Victory Lane. Yeah, really cool. Ra great race, great finish and great championship win for Landon. Certainly deserves it. Joining his father on the wall out there at Hickory. Uh, number five of our Coast to Coast Top 7, I'm going to go with Kyle Campbell, sticking it in the Southeast region, winning Saturday's Carolina Pro Late Model event at Anderson Motor Speedway. And how to duke it out with some of the best. I mean, we, did, we didn't talk about Kyle Campbell a lot this year when it comes to the pro late models, but Mason Maggio was up near the front. Caden Quapple, who's really burst onto the scene this year. Obviously, his brother Carson running a junior motorsports super late or late model stock, I should say, uh, on the Cars Tour. So really cool job by Kyle who had to fend off not one, but like two late race restarts to get the job done in the Carolina pro late model event. So Kyle Campbell, my coast to coast number five. Number six, Kyle Ricky. I'm going to go with a, a former NASCAR Cup Series driver, an Xfinity Series and Truck Series winner. In fact, he won a truck race this year, won a modified race up here in the Northeast last Wednesday night, and that is Ryan Priest picking up the uh, the Outlaw Modified event at the Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park here in Connecticut. Priest held off some of the best in modified racing and Ronnie Williams and Mike Christopher Jr., uh, both of those drivers. In fact, all three have had success at the track that lies just behind me here at Stafford. Um, Priest will be... Uh, remaining up here in the Northeast as he'll compete this Saturday in the fall final at Stafford Motor Speedway. So congratulations to Ryan uh, picking up that win last Wednesday night, big midweek show here at Thompson. 
And I'm going to wrap up our Coast Coast Top 7 with number 7, and it goes to a driver who didn't even get to celebrate his win because it was just announced yesterday. They raced Saturday, and it was announced yesterday when we recorded this, so that's Monday, uh, that he won the race. That's DJ Shaw, won up at White Mountain in the closest pass finish in series history. It took two days to settle it after a protest and an uh, uh, engine. Well, no, there was a protest on the finish, but it also came down to a transponder issue with uh, Tim Brown, who finished in the second spot. Uh, an incredible, credible race. But it comes down to Brown's transponder being a little bit too far forward on the race car than what is, uh, according to the past rule book or, or the regulations. And unfortunately for him, that win was taken away. So DJ Shaw is credited with it. Either way, both those drivers, tip of the cap, side by side the last four, five, six laps. And uh, DJ was able to get it done on the inside, although it looked like Brown had it on the outside by about the length of a fingernail. So pretty incredible racing on the past series. It's been really great this year. And what a way as we kind of wind down their year to do it at White Mountain in such a dramatic fashion. So tip of the cap, DJ Shaw. You didn't get to celebrate in victory lane, but we're celebrating here on Coast to Coast. So uh, I'd say that's a win too. Uh, Kyle, our shout outs of the week. Uh, any honorable mentions on your front? Yeah, I want to go with uh, a driver that we talked quite a bit about during the Arkham Menards series event, uh, his first start here in, in America, and that's Andres Perez de Lara. Um, ran a well, uh, top 10, top five most of the evening last Thursday night, finished in the seventh spot in the Arkham Menards series event at Bristol. He is the current NASCAR Mexico Challenge Series uh, leader in their championship standings. They have a couple of races to go. Uh, and, and I, you know, in, in talking with him pre-race and watching him compete on the racetrack, uh, he could very well be on the same path that we saw Daniel Suarez take over the last decade and, and make the move uh, up through the sports uh, first national series uh, down south with NASCAR Mexico and then into the regional series here in America, perhaps in the Arkham Menard series uh, and before moving into trucks and Xfinity and Cubs. So uh, Andreas uh, impressed me, handled traffic perfectly, had a great race car and and made the most of it last Thursday night. Yeah, absolutely. Certainly an impressive run. I'd really be curious to see what kind of, because you never know who's watching these races, and especially with the Cup Series, Xfinity Series in town, you never know who's keeping an eye on some of these up-and-comers. So certainly uh, Andreas has a good shot, especially with that top 10 finish. I'm going to go with our winners from the historic Glass City 200 out at Toledo, which is going to be the stop of one of our Arkham Menard Series races coming up. Uh, William Soelich uh, picked up the win in the CRA Super Series, and then Trevor Berry on the Outlaw Late Model side. Uh, it's one of the uh, oldest running Ohio short track races um, each and every year, and uh, they do a doubleheader, both 100 lap events, so a marathon of an afternoon it was out at Toledo. Both drivers getting uh, some much-needed wins. Obviously, we talked about William. He's in the power rankings each and every week in terms of one of the best short track pavement drivers uh, this year, and he's certainly adding to his list and adding to his resume with all these different wins. So congratulations uh, to them. Kyle, we got a lot going on, so I'm going to go ahead and just skip the go or no-go segment. I don't feel like arguing today. Right. It's a great week. It's a great day to be alive, so we're just going to keep on moving. And uh, coming up next, off the flip side of this break, is going to be Sammy Smith, the driver of the KBM Toyota for the Arkham Menard Series races, as he captured his second straight ARCA East Championship, also running NASCAR Xfinity Series for Joe Gibbs Racing. We'll talk all things short track racing with our newest and most recent champion, Sammy Smith. Coming up next on NASCAR Coast to Coast, presented by Flow Racing. Back to NASCAR Coast to Coast presented by Flow Racing here on MRN. Joining us now via Zoom, it is the big winner out of Bristol Motor Speedway this past weekend, Sammy Smith. First off, it seemed like you won everything. You second Arca East title, you won the Sioux Chief Showdown. Uh, oh, yeah, you also won the race. Uh, picture perfect weekend to kind of wrap up that, sec that second consecutive championship. Yeah, thank you. It was uh, definitely definitely a good, uh, good day. I think we were able to win practice, win the pole, and then um, – win the race and then those two championships so it was pretty cool to do that I was telling my guys I think we pretty much had the two championships locked up going into the race but it wouldn't have been you know the same if we didn't win the race I really you know going in looking into this year I wanted to win Bristol you know just because of the how what a cool track it is with this you know win the sword and all the 
all the historic historical uh, races that have been there and um you know just glad we were able to do that you know you say you won practice qualifying in the race and it looks pretty easy on paper but i'm assuming it wasn't that easy behind the scene <laughs> there were a couple of times i saw you and some of the other leaders in lap traffic and then held my breath for you guys a few times i mean how tight was it out there yeah it was it was really tight i think there were a lot of uh moving chicanes i think every lap but yeah it was tough you know brandon jones my teammate um he, he was really good as well. Um, I think, you know, I chose the wrong lane on that first initial start and lost the lead. And then um, I was able to get past him, I think, 10 or so laps later. But it was tough to then pull him off on restarts and then um, short runs. I think we were a little bit off a little bit. But once a long, long run came, I think we were pretty good. But the tough part was you couldn't really pull away because once you caught traffic, I feel like the, the lap cars made it difficult for me to, to get by. And then once Brandon got there, they just let him by. So it was tough to, you know, try to keep a margin there. I think towards the end of the race here, once I started to catch, I think, ninth and 10th place in lap traffic, it started to get pretty tough. And and um, Brandon started to catch me a little bit. But, you know, that last restart was tough with, um, you know, obviously him on my inside. And he had the best restart on the inside he had all night, too. So that was tough. But, you know, if there was going to be a guy that was going to be on my bottom and race me clean, I'd probably pick Brandon on any any day he obviously he knew what I was going for and yeah um, I think he had I think he had the respect to obviously know the best car um was going to win the race and um yeah I appreciate him for that I know you know no matter what series races at Bristol that track changes over the course of a race what are you as a driver looking for obviously changing lines because you know one would think it's got to be on the bottom but there were some times where you know, I know they had the PJ1 down, but there were some times you could run the middle, you could run the top. So what, what kind of things were you navigating uh, over the course, especially those long runs that we had on Thursday night? Yeah, Thursday night, I think the preferred lane was the bottom with PJ1. I think with traffic, you could make make the top work a little bit or middle. You couldn't go to the top, but, um, you know, the preferred lane was the bottom. And then I think, you know, obviously the Xfinity race, I learned a lot more too with, with what happened there. I think it started to wear out and we moved up, but I think the base thing was, you know, from it was tough. For, I think track conditions just for I feel like for me for learning wise, it just with um, you know, it was sunny and then it cooled off and then it went completely dark. And then at the same time, the PJ one is wearing out. It's gaining rubber. It's picking it up when the caution comes out. It was pretty bad, like Bristol with when the cautions come out, track go from to black to to uh, clear again. So. Um, I think it's tough to find a good balance here. I think we found that in the, the Arca car, but Xfinity car, we struggle a little bit to get the balance right. We just fought two free in. Um, and the guys worked hard all all day or all, all night to try to figure it out, but we just we struggled to do that, and um, it made for a long three or last. <laughs> Chris mentioned a moment ago, this is your second consecutive Arca East championship. How does it compare to the first? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's definitely pretty cool. I think last year, it was the learning and just trying to, you know, obviously I didn't really know what to expect and um, didn't really have too many expectations, but I think this year, obviously wanted to go win the, the race and then or win the championship and then win as many races as we could. And I think we won, I don't know, whatever it was. Five five seven. Of, Let's see, you won five four national, seven. six total. Yeah. 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 So five out of the seven. And um, I think it was good. And then, you know, I think kind of, feel like we should have had a couple more ARCA wins this year already, but, um, you know, it's in the past and I feel like we just have learned and, and made ourselves better from there. But, you know, we have two more or three more races, two more ARCA and then the, the Phoenix race there at the end of the year. But we're, I think we're six points back in the owner's championship. So I'm going to dig deep and, and try to go get that. Yeah, I was about to say in victory lane, we talked about, you know, the fact that if you were to run those first four races, you probably would be right there in the thick of things, if not leading the championship. So yeah. with the owner's championship at mind, how much more motivation is that to say, OK, I got the driver's stuff locked in on my end. Now let's go get one as an owner's championship. Yeah, I think it's it's pretty cool. I think um, going into Bristol, I think we were 20, 21 points back. And obviously the 20 there was not good. So we gained a lot of points on them with maximizing every point we could and got that. And um, it's, it's feel good going into these last two short tracks. I feel confident going into them. And yeah, I think obviously if I didn't miss the first four races, but I think they do bonus points for ARCA, I think every five races. So I think honestly, even without the bonus points, I think I'd probably be, I mean, obviously I'd still be back, I think a little bit, but you know, probably 20, 30 points. Yeah. So 
I think, uh, you know, it, it definitely kind of sucks they do bonus points, but, you know, it's it's part of it. And obviously going into the year, I knew it wasn't even going to be a, a possibility and it's not. So, um, you know, we just try to go out and um, win races. And I think that's all we can do. As you get older and get now more experience on the bigger tracks, uh, what do you think about racing, I guess, the air, uh, some of these bigger, higher speed ovals that you couldn't run a year ago? Yeah, I think, honestly, it's, I feel like I'm not surprised myself, but I think for Kansas, Michigan, um, I think they the tracks that I felt like were going to be really challenging Pocono, I feel like I've done pretty good in the Xfinity car. Um, I feel like we've made mistakes or I've made a mistake and cost us a good finish, but um, I feel like we've had top three speed every every big track we've gone to in the Xfinity car, which is you know, obviously not a surprise to me, but I didn't honestly expect it. I think it was going to be that would be more challenging than it actually is. And um, I think just kind of prepare preparation. I think it's key to, to, to go and all that. And obviously I didn't get to run anything in any big trucks in the ARCA car. So I think that that made it tough to go in the Xfinity with really no confidence or experience on the big trucks, but I think it's been fun and um, definitely enjoyed it and looking forward to my last two races at Martinsville and Phoenix. What's the biggest learning curve for you this year, especially as you tackle the Xfinity schedule with the bigger tracks? I mean, like what translates from the ARCA stuff or even heck the super late model stuff and what doesn't, and what are some of the things you just kind of had to figure out? Um, I honestly think the race wise race craft with other racers, it probably compares more to the super late model just because how good I think you can kind of look at your super late model crowd and look how good some drivers are there and then look at your Xfinity group and, how many good drivers are, are there. So I think those kind of go hand in hand together. I think with just the, the skill set of, you know, race craft and what you have to do to, to race good around people. And then obviously I think the ARCA is good with the, the heavier car, but there's, there's so much different with less, less downforce, heavier, has more power, just um, handles way different on big tracks and short tracks. So um, I think there's just a lot of things, pit stops. I've never done pit stops. So I think, you know, I've made a mistake on pit road, cost us a good finish. Um, I think just work in the air because the Arca car is, it's, it's, you know, obviously it's not impossible to get sucked around, but you know, it's, there's so much grip down force that it's, it's hard to get loose under somebody and Xfinity car. It's like happens like that. So it's, it's kind of a, you really got to be on your toes and pay attention and try to study that stuff. And I think I, I feel like I studied it before just, um, you know, I told myself wouldn't let that happen. And obviously it, it happened and, and I think, you know, I haven't put myself in that position again, which is, I think, think good and probably won't be the last time I was in the position, but I think it just, you got to think experience it firsthand um, sure. to continue to grow. What does it mean to win all these races and now this championship for your team owner, Kyle Bush? Yeah, it's cool. I think, you know, they've never been the Arca series, so it's cool to win them. The Arca East and the Sioux Chiefs championship. I think, um, you know, I think it was good. We've had a, we were, consistent in both i think our worst finish was um i don't honestly know i don't think it was bad though i think it was maybe fourth yeah in both of them so i think it was pretty Which good to, and, you know 90 percent of the field that's a heck of a day you know well, that's crazy yeah. yeah i think you know going into the year we had high expectations you know for arca i think i have to balance my expectations from super late models to arca to xfinity i think obviously the goal is to win every single one of them but i think um yeah look at just the variables and stuff but um i think you know going into the year in arc i think it was the goal to try to go out and win every race and it was it was going to be a possibility but um you know we've had moments where we shine and we dominate and you know there's moments that we are just i think okay or even car and we we try to you know try to go win and we have done that and then there's times where like the big tracks we've struggled i don't know what uh what has happened with the big tracks but you know michigan pocono and kansas we've just struggled i don't know what uh what we have done but um we definitely haven't haven't done anything productive so but i think you know guys are working hard and um you know we have two short tracks at the end of the year which has been our strong point of the whole season so i'm really looking forward to those two and then phoenix at the end of the year you mentioned kyle uh obviously the last couple of weeks things are going to be changing a whole heck of a lot yeah. uh there's some people moving around at jgr we talked about brandon jones going to jrm and obviously with kyle stuff going chevy what does do you know anything about next year what you're doing i mean because certainly things are going to change especially on the arca side yeah i'm honestly not sure yet i have a management team that you know deals with all that and sure. i really don't obviously i'm 
don't worry about it. I think I got great partners behind me, but they're working, uh, working on that. And my goals, you know, these last couple of races finish out the year strong and um, just do all I can and work my hardest to try to uh, go out and win these last couple of races. Or I guess I could, I could really say, what would you like to do? Like what, like what's perfect for 2023 for you? Would it be full-time Xfinity or would you still like to kind of do both? Still obviously race some super late models like you are coming up this weekend. I mean, what, what's your ideal schedule? Yeah, I'm honestly, you know, I, any race car I can get in and race, I think it's it's good for there me. There you and go. I, Racers race, a, right? <laughs> yeah, if it's, a, you know, anything, I'll, I'll get in and race it. So I'm not, you know, I'm not going to complain, whatever it is. Obviously, I'm very fortunate to be in the position I am. And, um, you know, hopefully it's whatever it is, it's in fast equipment because that's obviously what I want to do and, and go out and compete for wins. So um, hopefully they can get, figure that out soon and, and um, get, it, get it sorted out. Final question for you. Uh, looking ahead, a couple of weeks uh, it was a Salem in October, October first, the next event for the Arkham Menard Series. Another very high banks half mile, I believe it's yeah. a half mile oval, uh, about as fast as as Bristol. Uh, excited to get there, coming off a win at Bristol, going to Salem in two weeks' time. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. I think Salem probably compares to Winchester more than Bristol, um, and I've been very su successful at Winchester as well, winning there and. I think, you know, it's just probably a little bit rough for at Salem. I've never been to Salem, so I couldn't, you know, not tell you, but um, that's what, you know, obviously people I've talked to with experience I've said. And, um, yeah, I look forward to going there. And I think, you know, trying to – think it gives me a lot of motivation to try to go get that owner's championship six points back. So, I think, um, you know, just not going for these two wins, I think we have something, something to really fight for there in Toledo. And before we let you go, obviously you kind of hinted at it, getting back in the super late model this weekend out at Five Flags in Pensacola. How much more, I guess, is it more fun now as your career, progr hello, can't talk, career progresses that you get to come back and go run and team up with some good car owners and, and just go out for the fun of it and win these races? Because obviously, I mean, it's kind of your roots, right? It's where you came up. A lot of your fellow competitors like Jake Garcia and, and you know, the like are doing the kind of the same thing, progressing up. So yeah. uh, talk about your super late mile experience this year and uh, what can we expect the rest of the year? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Like, kind of like you said, just go out and, and have fun. And I don't think treat it like any other race, just, you know, with an awesome team and an awesome crew chief, uh, Donnie Wilson Motorsports and, and Von Seuss. And their cars are really fast right now. So I'm really excited to go out there and drive it and, um, We've won three races this year with the Red Bud 400, North Wilkesboro, um, Speed Weeks race. We've won the Speed Weeks championship, too. So I have, uh, I think, uh, three or four more races. This this will be the fourth race, or is this one, All-American in Winchester and then the Derby. So I'm um, looking forward to, you know, getting to those big races. I think that's where these, uh, I feel like me and these cars progress even more is the longer races um, seem to be really good. So I'm um, looking forward to that. and. Um, really excited for this weekend it's crazy you just rattled off all the wins you had in the super all the wins you had in arca was this like a dream do you think this is your biggest season to date like your kind of breakout year yeah i think so i think you know i had a goal at the beginning of the year um and mm -hmm. it was 15 races to win and i'm at 10 right now and i think i got i think 18 or 19 races left some Actually, good no, odds not, some no, good odds <laughs> not, not that many uh, okay i think i have uh eight eight or nine left so between and you need all. to win five. Uh, we could do that. Yeah, that's that's so, doable. I think so too. So hopefully, you know, obviously, definitely has been my best season. I think to date, and um, hopefully, just continue to go win and and um, you know try to become a better race car driver. I think is is what I'm going for. Well, congratulations again on everything, the success. It was really cool to be down there in victory lane and see how much, you know, this championship or really two championships and the race win meant to your guys too. You know, I yeah. think they just for the love of racing. They love being a part of it and to see you succeed. So it was really cool. And then to watch you progress up in the Xfinity, Xfinity series and beyond. So, uh, but have fun this weekend at Pensacola. We'll be uh, watching on live stream and good luck the rest of the year. Yeah. Thanks guys. I appreciate it. And uh, thanks for having me on. You're welcome. That is Sammy Smith, a busy, busy guy behind the wheel. He's going to finish up the year. Super late models, Xfinity series, ARCA, you name it. He's behind the wheel. Coming up next, we've got our Go With The Flow calendar as we finish up this episode of NASCAR Coast to Coast presented by Flow Racing. Welcome back to NASCAR 
our Coast to Coast presented by Flow Racing. Just visited with Sammy Smith, and I think, Kyle, it's easy to say Sammy is well on his way to being a perennial uh, race winner and a contender on the NASCAR National Series side. It was interesting, and he talked about a little bit, too, um, in the interview just now, but I was listening to his radio. I was spotting for NBC for Dylan Welch on Pit Road, and we had Sammy, and it was interesting to hear him talk during the Xfinity race versus describe the handling of the race car during the ARCA race. He was much more subdued, minor things on the ARCA side, but boy, he wasn't kidding. There's a steep learning curve when you get to the Xfinity series because repeatedly would go, I don't know what's going on. I'm loose for three laps. I'm tight for three laps. Then I'm loose again for three laps. He goes, I don't know what I need to do behind the wheel. And it's interesting listening to his crew chief, Jason Ratcliffe, try to walk him through some sort of troubleshooting methods behind the wheel. But uh, certainly, you know, and like he even said too, the ARCA race looked easy. It's certainly not, but definitely the challenge I think now is getting a grip on the Xfinity car. So uh, really interesting to hear, hear kind of his input as he uh, begins to learn, you know, each uh, each one of these different race cars. Yeah, and at least he recognizes and acknowledges the challenges that he is having behind the wheel because I think there's a lot of young talent out there that uh, they don't do that and, and they struggle a little bit longer because of that. Uh, very mature for his age, hard to believe. Uh, he just turned 18 years old uh, and now is a two-time Arca East champion. Certainly has aligned himself nicely for the future uh, right there in the Toyota pipeline with Joe Gibbs Racing. So we'll see, uh, like you mentioned to him uh, with the whole Kyle Busch announcement uh, this past week, how that could affect his future, if it affects it at all. But uh, time will tell. I'm sure he'll be in a good spot, though, come 2023. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. And, and probably mostly only a really on the ARCA side, I could think of, just because I think he's well on the Toyota pipeline, like you mentioned. So I'm sure there'll be a seat over at Joe Gibbs or someone else with Toyota. But uh, it'll be interesting to kind of see what chips fall, as he mentioned. At this point, he has nothing to worry about. He's just going to do his thing, and he's got people that'll take care of it. So I'm sure we'll stay tuned uh, as silly season continues on here as we get to the off season. kind of what transpires on that front. All right, a uh, couple news and notes to kind of keep uh, pointed to, and I was hoping as we recorded the show we would get some clarification on the uh, NASCAR Advanced Auto Parts National Championship for short track racing. And, Kyle, I haven't seen anything. Please tell me you have because the whole point of this is it was down to Peyton Sellers' lane rigs, right? Peyton Sellers goes out, sweeps Dominion's doubleheaders, puts him ahead as far as the win total is concerned over lane rigs over the course of the season. But lane came in with the points lead. So who is the national champion? I guess we can go ahead and argue. Who do you think should be the national champion uh, before they officially announce it here, hopefully sometime this week? I, I have no idea. Obviously, a, a, a big week, a big weekend, that is, uh, for Peyton, but um, a, a great year for Lane. Went into the weekend separated by four points. Um, and I'm sure that's why we haven't seen an announcement yet, because they are still tabulating and calculating and correlating the numbers. And hopefully uh, by week's end, we will know who the 2022 uh, national champion is uh, for the NASCAR Advanced Auto Parts Weekly Series. Um, but it, no doubt we'll come down to those two. And, and, you know, what has been a great battle and kind of I don't know if you call it a rivalry, but, uh, you know, a, a rivalry of, of sorts, sure. uh, because they raced each other on the same racetrack for this national championship more times than not this year. We're in years past, we're seeing drivers from different regions of the country race for the national championship. And, you know, driver A up in the Northeast may have never, not even know who driver B down in the Southeast is um, racing completely different race cars and completely different disciplines. And this championship is going to come down to two drivers that for the most part compete in the same region of the country on the same tracks at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. So certainly kind of ratcheted up the anticipation and the excitement of this championship when you have both those top two on the same racetrack running South Boston on a weekly basis, yep. obviously both running Dominion. Uh, really cool. So uh, congratulations to whoever wins. Uh, but nonetheless, I think both have had exceptional seasons, multiple, multiple wins across uh, you know the region. And um, certainly uh, whether you win or lose, I don't think you can hang your head on just how fun it was to kind of keep track and see all the success both of those drivers have had. The only other thing I had, Kyle, and this I thought this was cool, so Flow Racing now the home of NASCAR Roots and Grassroots Racing on the pavement side this year. We talked about at the beginning of the year how exciting this is going to be. 
Well, now, uh, you know, we've seen enough races over the course on the platform uh, to develop our own little uh, power rankings, I should say. And Rob Lount, who is in studio here a couple times this year uh, with us here on Coast to Coast, uh, kind of helped develop a little bit of a power ranking system. So as we finished the month of August, I thought it was interesting. We've had almost everybody on this show, except for two, in the top five. Sammy Smith ranked as August number one. Obviously, this is as he was going into his championship winning efforts out at Bristol. Evan Schottko, who won two of the biggest late model races you could win in the span of a month, uh, is number two. William Soilish, we talked about him, number three, 15 years old, and he's won six pro uh, late model races with Cars Tour amongst a dozen others across uh, different tracks over the course of the year. Big money Matt Hirschman is in the top five at number four. And then William Byron, who was in the top five, Three actually going into uh, after July uh, slipped a little bit as he finished a runner-up spot uh, to Eric Jones at an IRP uh, at the end of August. So interesting, kind of to see the power rankings. I, I would agree with this top five. Uh, granted, there's a you know hundreds and hundreds more racers across the country. I'm sure that would like to say different, but really cool to see uh, Flow Racing coming out with their power rankings for uh, NASCAR Roots Racing here this year. Uh, on the short, short track level. All right, Kyle, our go with the flow calendar, chocked full again, championship weekends uh, for Five Flag Speedway. Uh, I saw Jenner's Towns on their championship night as well, but uh, we'll kick things yep. off. Uh, north of the border, once again, championship for the NASCAR Pinty Series. What do you think, Kyle? Down to the nitty-gritty here, fall brawl. What do you think? Yeah, Delaware Speedway in Delaware, Ontario. The race will take place on Sunday on Flow Racing. I think it's Mark Antoine Cameron's championship to lose, uh, a driver that has competed in the series for, for many seasons. 33-point gap back to Kevin Lacroix, who, uh, who's who been a championship contender for the last several seasons as well. Uh, but for Cameron, um, this will be his best season to date. Hope, you know, it looks like he's going to win the championship. It'll also mark the first time he has ever finished in the top five in his five full-time seasons in the series. So uh, top five in the championship standings, that is. So, uh, boy, when he figured it out, uh, he yeah. did it in a big way here in 2022. And um, looks like it's it's, it's going to be his title that we'll be talking about here in a week's time. And it didn't come without some drama either, you know. Had a, uh, a penalty implicated yeah. on him, lost 12 points, uh, which, you know, again, right now he's up 33. But at the same time, that could have changed things going into the – penultimate race so but he won that appeal got those points back yep. obviously setting himself up nicely for a championship so uh it'll be well deserved for sure uh but nonetheless a uh, heck of a season uh for mark antoine cameron so that race is coming up like kyle mentioned sunday 4 30 on flow and then another huge race on the short track schedule here stateside the valley star credit union 300 at martinsville speedway uh finishes up the virginia triple crown it is live here on the motor racing network Coming up this weekend on Saturday, 6.30 p.m. You can also watch it on Flow. Uh, Kyle, this is a long-standing tradition uh, here in the region. Martinsville Speedway always puts on great racing. It draws big names year in and year out. I think there's, what, 83 cars entered for this thing, including Timothy Peters making a return. Uh, it's setting up to be a pretty fun Saturday night up there at Martinsville. Yeah, Ty Majeski entered in the race after winning the truck event last week. Uh, you mentioned Timothy Peters. All of those championship contenders that we talked about earlier uh, in that region of the country and the late models, uh, they're all entered. Um, Going to be a great race. Uh, it always is. I was there a couple of years ago for the Motor Racing Network and watched Josh Berry just whoop the field. I think he led all 200 laps and route to the win. Um, you know, it's a long, like you mentioned, a long standing tradition, several decades now that this has uh, been held at the famed Martinsville Speedway. And I uh, can't wait to tune in on to the Motor Racing Network crew on Saturday night. Yeah, same here for sure. Uh, best of luck to our colleagues headed down to Martinsville this weekend. Uh, night of Champions, we mentioned some championships getting wrapped up uh, uh, for the year, 2022. One of those is the Blizzard Series finale for the Southern Super Series at Five Flags Speedway. They just had their local uh, track championship night last week. This is the big Southern Super Series championship night. Uh, we just heard Sammy Smith is entered uh, as our the uh, championship contenders, Hunter Robbins, 19-point advantage over Bubba Pollard. Both of those guys you know are going to be duking it out, but you're going to have to contend with Steven Nassi, Michael Hind, and the rest. So uh, a stout field every time we talk about Southern Super Series. Uh, the big names show up. Uh, should be a great night Saturday night. Uh, it'll be interesting. 19 points seems like a lot for a short track series, but 
we've seen how rough and tumble these late model guys get, especially out at Five Flags. So I'll be curious to see who takes home the championship again that Saturday night out in Pensacola. How about the Bobby Watson Memorial Big Money Series out at uh, Carteret County Speedway, Big Money Series, super late models. They got street stocks, all the good stuff out there as well, kind of wrapping up their big uh, big season finale. And then you're hosting a nice doubleheader, Kyle, up at Stafford. The, uh, well, the Napa Fall Final begins Friday and Saturday. What can you tell us about that big event? Yeah, Friday night, just a regular program here uh, at the at the Stafford Motor Speedway for our five weekly divisions. The SK Modifieds will uh, may crown a champion. Uh, Todd Owen, looking for a second consecutive championship, has a large enough point lead where he could clinch it on Friday evening. Those very same teams, the SKs, along with a lot of the SK light drivers, will be back in action on Saturday, the Napa Fall Final. Uh, it is a Monaco modified tri-track series event. Uh, one of the other uh, several modified tours that compete up here in this part of the country. 53 teams right now are entered to try to make the 32 car starting field. Uh, they'll have uh, practice heats, last chance race, and the 80 lap feature event, $77,000 purse. So uh, going to be a, a big day of racing. I know, um, I think all of our reserve tickets are about sold out. So uh, it's going to be a general admission uh, ticket only uh, for, for most folks on race day. So going to be fun. Hopefully we can take the weather that is behind me, bottle it up for about three days and unleash it on Saturday because it is a gorgeous day here. Uh, here it could be chilly come Saturday afternoon, but we'll take 65, 66 degree weather and uh, clear skies. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. And what a way it would be to end such a big year for you guys. I know the Double hook bar is going to be stacked two, three wide, trying to get a cocktail there uh, come Friday and Saturday. <laughs> I keep forgetting you, you've you been here this I year. I did. I made my to, debut to, trip a couple months ago. You got to enjoy the the double hook. Uh, so, yeah, it's going it's to be a great weekend. You know, Matt Hirschman's going to be here, Ryan Priest, you know, all the big names for Modified Racing, uh, 53 of them right now. Uh, going to be a great day. You can watch it on Flow Racing on Saturday afternoon. And speaking of flow, tons going on on the weekly level as well as across different variations of motorsports. Some things to note, uh, the 40th running of the Eldora Four Crown Nationals. Uh, if you're not an open wheel fan, I would suggest at least checking it out when you're flipping through the tons and tons of races on flow. Uh, one of the coolest events, and they're paying an extra $40,000 to the driver who can go four for four, winning in the midget, the sprint car, the silver crown, and of course the World of Outlaw wing sprint car. Kyle Larson went three for four uh, yeah. in 2011, so it possibly can be done. Now, I don't know if Kyle... Somebody's gone four for four right before? Well, uh, uh, Is it... Did Jack do it? Jack did. It wasn't in a wing sprint car. I think it, they okay. ran modifieds or something. But, yes, you're yeah. right. Somebody did go four for four way back in the day, well before I was born. Uh, but, yeah, you could do it. Jack Hewitt certainly did that. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was pretty special. Uh, so that's going on beginning Friday over the weekend. Uh Again, tons more races. Meridian, uh, Riverheads on their weekly uh, championship night at Jennerstown. Uh, tons more going on. So uh, get to uh, Flow Racing this weekend. I know I will when I'm not covering uh, some stuff out at Texas Motor Speedway with the micro sprints. Kyle, you're going to be busier than heck over at Stafford. Hopefully you can check out some of the other races going on as well. Uh, but, yeah, should be a fun weekend. Hopefully you uh, have some good weather out there this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Going to be a great weekend. Uh, you know, I feel like these lists, the uh, the 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 go with the flow calendar, it's getting thinner and thinner every week because you know we're we're wrapping things up. Started with Bowman Gray about three weeks ago, and every week, you know, we we crown more champions and you know lose more schedules and tracks to to talk about the following week. Uh, it's that time of year. It is, but you know what? That just means it's time to start talking about next year when we start getting schedules and formats oh and things like I know, I know. Pump the brakes. Let's get through this year first. Uh, Kyle, it's always good to see you, my friend. We will talk next week. Enjoy uh, the fall final. I know you guys worked awfully hard this year. You're probably ready for a little bit of a break, I, I bet. We're getting there. We're yeah. getting there. It's hard to believe we only have two weeks left, but it's going to be a good weekend, and, and enjoy your time in Texas. I certainly will. It's going to be hotter than Hades, but we're going to figure it out. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in once again to NASCAR Coast to Coast presented by Flow Racing. Appreciate our guest, Sammy Smith, for coming on today's show. Congratulations to him on picking up a pair of championships this past weekend at Bristol. For Kyle Ricky, our producer, Alexa Westman, I'm Chris Wilner. Enjoy your weekend of racing, folks. Enjoy championship weekends wherever you may be. And, of course, we'll talk all about it coming up next week. Have a good one.